Okay, I just about uh, knocked it on the floor. Uh, I don't. I didn't have. I don't have a stand underneath it. I just had blocks underneath and and knocked the blocks out and just about put it on the floor. So I took it all apart and I'm going to go ahead and uh, make a stand for it so that I can put this in a stand so it ain't. Because what happened was I I bumped block slid out and bam down it went and it just about went to the floor so I don't want to knock it on the floor so what I'm going to do is I'm going to go over here and I'm going to go I think I'm going to go about halfway in between actually no I'm not I'm going to go about a quarter of the way I'm going to go right about there and there same thing on this side there and there somewhere and then I'm going to make a I'm going to actually make a stand for it so that it, I can bolt it down and I won't have to worry about knocking it on the floor. <laughs> Don't need to uh, work on something and then throw it on the floor. So anyway, I got it clamped up here. What I'm going to do is I'm going to pick up the corners, pick up this back edge and pick up this edge and then drop some holes in there for probably 1032. I'll put some 1032 uh, um, screws through that. Anyway, I'll put some, I'm going to put some screws to that and then what I'm thinking about doing is putting a, um, I was thinking maybe a, a wooden beam this way, this way, and then similar to what I did with my, some of my other engines. I'll figure it out. I'll, I'll figure some kind of stand out. Whether it be that, or if I just take and build a box, and like, and cut a hole in the top, and and come down and bolt it down. Now, uh, it's definitely going to get a stand put underneath it, though, because I that was it was close. <laughs> so, so anyway, that's what I'm going to do. I'm just going to go ahead and and put some uh, holes in those flanges and and figure out some type of stand. So when I get that built and uh, start putting it back together and I'll let you uh, take a gander at it. Catch you later. <coughs> okay, I just about dropped it on the floor yesterday so I took it all apart and uh, did the two holes on each side. This isn't the stand that I'm going to have it on. I just grabbed a couple pieces of wood and, and uh, put a couple of wood screws in on each side to hold it so that it doesn't <laughs> roll around and I can't knock the block out from underneath. That's what happened yesterday. I knocked the block out and boom, it just about went, just about went bloop, off the table. And, and that was enough to scare me. So I, like I say, I took time out and took it all, took it apart and, and then put, did those holes and put these on. So this morning I'm working on the little rocker arm standoffs and uh, what I did was uh, figured out what diameter I needed to encompass the whole thing and turned up a couple blanks. Now I'm going to go over to the mill. <coughs> I'm going to go over to the mill and, and, uh, and mill this down to quarter inch wide and quarter inch on the back and then drill the holes through and uh, then there'll be one more one more part done. So what I'm planning on doing is putting in a 5C collet block and then just setting it up and and cutting it. So I am going to be over at the mill for the next little segment and we'll cut these down. Okay I got uh, one of the parts in a 5C collet holder here and I got a 3 8 uh, reground end mill in there and we're going to come down and, and uh, cut that. And we're going to cut the overall width holding it symmetrical to that hole which means I'll just go back and forth from side to side. So. Move it up here closer and get it set to the height I need. 
All right, so I make sure the vise is tight. Lock my spindle. And we should be off. I'm going to get my coffee cup out of the way. Got to have my, got to have my tea. I think I'm going to slow her down. <clears throat> I'm running it at wide open. I'm going to slow it down at least one notch. Get rid of some of that high pitch squeal. Now we're going to lock it right there. I'm going to just come up to a number on my dial and lock it. And we're going to take a cut here. And then we're going to flip it 180. In. And we're going to check to see where we're at. We are at. We're at 560, and we want to go at 250, so we got 110 thou to go. Divide that in half, 55 thousandths. So I'm going to crank it in, 50 thou. 10, 20, 30, 40, and 50. Flip it I need to go back to school for math because that wasn't right. <laughs> I said we were at 550. Uh, we're at 460 now because I took the 50 thou. And I want to go to 250. It would have been 250. I should have took 125, not uh, 50. <laughs> so... I need to take I need to take a hundred thou yet. <clears throat> Why is my head not working? We're at four sixty. I want to go to two fifty. That's two ten. So one oh five. I think I'm going to move over so I can climb cut across that. Okay, so I need to go one, one five. So we're going to go one hundred and five. Been 
notice it's a lot quieter. <clears throat> Fine cutting, it takes less horsepower and plus it'll be a quieter cut. The only thing is, you don't want to do that with a great big end mill. Uh, you'll be sending your cables zinging or jumping. And, but with the smaller end mills, you can get away with it. I can usually get away with it all the way up to a half inch. And plus you ride, ride the, X, the table brake a little bit. Okay, that should be that should be better this time. <laughs> this isn't a real critical dimension. I mean, it's another dimension that you know we're at 252. I'm going to leave it right there. Now I want to mill the back side off up to that. I believe I'm going to just check my model here real quick. Yep. So we're just going to turn it 90 now and, and take that, hopefully take that one side off. in the collet. I'm thinking about throwing that hole. No, I'm not going to. I'm just going to take it out and just clamp it in the vise on a parallel and, and drill that hole. So I can take that out of there. Seems I got this set up. So that way they're both the same. I'm going to take the wrench and take it out of there. And put the other one in. And do it again. Give my collar a little bit of a air shot here. And I'm put the other one in. And tighten it up. Funny how these collet blocks. Anyway, this one, and plus a friend of mine bought one, same thing. And no, no wrench. So you make you have to either make your own wrench or use a punch. So I went ahead and made a wrench right away. But but yeah, they sell them and they don't include a wrench unless it's just the brand that we bought. But I bought this many, many, many years ago. I say probably uh, close to 40 years ago. It's been a good good little unit. All right, here we go. going to turn it 90 this time. We know the dimensions there. Yeah. 
Okay. I'll take care of that part of it. Okay, so what I plan on doing is putting it in a vise like that and clamping it. And we're going to go up against a stop. So I'm going to get a stop here. Handy dandy stop. If you don't have a stop like that, make one. They are definitely worth the time and effort to make. They uh, come in really handy on a, a lot of things, make setups a lot quicker. Alright, so now... Slide that in up there. Let me clamp that. I'm going to slide my parallel down that way. And we're going to pick up the, the edge of the stop and the back. And we're going to move over and, and poke a 125 diameter hole. So basically I'm just going to put in my edge finder, pick up the edges and, and drill the hole. So I'll come back. I'll come back when I get it set up and get the holes drilled and we'll uh, get them on the, on the motor and we'll show you what they look like. 